Not many professional fighters acknowledge the power of Shaolin martial arts. Its techniques, often seen as complex and inefficient, have made it difficult for them to be accepted by fighters across the globe. However, believe it or not, Shaolin training is extremely rigorous, making its practitioners almost unbeatable. This is why no one has ever been able to defeat a Shaolin master. Shaolin is not just a martial art. It is a rich cultural heritage rooted in Chinese history, evolving for more than 1,500 years at the Shaolin Temple in Henan Province. The core strength of this art lies in physical prowess, mental discipline, and spiritual depth. Central to Shaolin training, practitioners are required to master 700 different movements, including kicks, punches, and weapon techniques. Often these practices are integrated with Qigong exercises to develop internal energy. Interestingly, Shaolin martial arts were never intended to promote fighting. Early practitioners primarily used them to protect the monastery community, improve health, and attain spiritual enlightenment. These scriptures brought from India by a monk were swallowed by a fish during the journey, so the chants are accompanied by the river. Over time, however, Shaolin's fame grew, particularly through martial arts films featuring Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan, turning it into one of the most popular traditional martial arts worldwide. As mentioned earlier, the intense training, which often reaches extreme levels, is one of the reasons no one has managed to defeat a Shaolin master. Shaolin Kung Fu emphasizes strength, flexibility, endurance, and agility through a combination of stances, strikes, kicks, and intricate routines known as Taolu. These forms serve not only as physical training, but also as a way to preserve and pass down Shaolin Kung Fu's traditions and philosophy. So, are you curious about just how grueling and extreme the training of this ancient Chinese martial art can be? Let's dive into the training methods applied at various Shaolin martial arts schools. One of the most demanding training routines is the finger strike exercise. From a young age, Shaolin students begin piercing trees and wooden boards to strengthen their fingers. As their training progresses, they practice delivering even more powerful strikes. Every finger on both hands must be trained to deliver lethal blows. Once they master this technique, their fingers become strong enough to perform more advanced skills such as the diamond finger technique or even standing on just their fingertips. Shaolin monks also enhance their finger strength through a training called Bo Ding Gong, or nail extraction. Typically, students are required to hammer 108 nails into a wooden board and practice pulling them out using only three fingers. As they advance, they are challenged to extract nails using their thumb, ring finger, and pinky. During the process, the nails are driven deeper into the wood, making the exercise significantly harder. In the final stage of this training, students must pull out 1,000 rusty nails to complete this intense practice. However, this exercise is designed to develop a powerful grip using the thumb, index, and middle fingers. Next up is another practice called Zhu Shi Gong, or foot striking. This training requires students to kick small stones with their bare feet as they walk, but it doesn't stop there. As they progress, they gradually begin kicking larger rocks. Eventually, students take it a step further, striking and kicking large stones from a distance. In real combat, 
This technique allows Shaolin warriors to topple and throw opponents with a single powerful kick aimed at the lower body. Some of you might already think these exercises sound intense and extreme, but believe it or not, the Tito Gong training is even more extreme. This exercise involves wrapping the head in several layers of soft fabric and repeatedly hitting it against a wall several times a day, every day. Initially, the strikes are gentle to prevent brain injuries. As the training progresses, both the force and the number of strikes are gradually increased. After the first year, three layers of fabric are removed every 100 days. Students enter the second phase of the training once all the layers have been removed. At this point, they begin striking their bare heads against stone walls. Their practice advances further with exercises such as sleeping in a headstand position, repeatedly hitting their skulls, and attempting to crush stone slabs. The goal is to harden the top, forehead, and back of the head while strengthening the skin, muscles, and bones. This rigorous training molds students into Shaolin warriors with iron hard heads. You can witness proof of the Tai To Gong training in this video, where a Shaolin master has reached the final stage of this practice. His head has become as tough as iron, and to demonstrate this, he drills his own skull. Remarkably, the master sustains no injuries whatsoever. The final and equally extreme training is known as the monk's pillar skill. This exercise focuses on developing leg strength, core stability, and overall balance. During the training, monks stand on two pillars, one foot on each pillar, then lower into a squatting position with sharp bamboo sticks placed underneath them. Often, they also hold bowls of water in both hands, with an additional bowl balanced on their head. In some cases, the water bowls are replaced with oil lamps to further increase the difficulty of the exercise. This demanding training ensures that Shaolin masters develop a rock-solid stance.